Dear learners, I am Christina Georgi, your academic counsellor for the MEG program. Today we will deal with the course code MEG01 titled British Poetry. So as per the request of many of our learners, this session will be recorded by me. So this very first blog is titled Orientation for the Study of Poetry and the Medieval Poet Chaucer. Moving on to Unit 6. Unit 6 is titled A Study of the Nun's Priest's Tale 1. So the Nun's Priest's Tale is one of the tales as part of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer as we are studying. To put it in simple terms, it is a beast fable and also a mock epic. So let me ask you these basic questions. What do you mean by a fable? Everybody knows. Right from our childhood, we have been listening to fables, right? So what exactly is a fable? What are the characteristics of a fable? Yes, animal stories with a moral. Very good. So that is what we mean by beast fables. And what do you mean by a mock epic? We know epics such as Paradise Lost. So what do you mean by mock epic? <laughs> a mock epic can be, yes, a short narrative poem. Yes, correct. It is a small narrative poem in which the conventions of epic are employed in the treatment of trivial themes. Yes. So it becomes a parody of the epics in a way. Yeah, that is what we mean by mock epic. So this particular tale can be considered as a mock epic. So this tale falls between the mole's tale and the doctor of physics tale. That is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Before moving on to this tale as such, let me give you an introduction to the three main structural units of the Canterbury Tales. You can already guess. We already discussed the prologue, then the tales. What do you mean by tales? The story is told by these pilgrims. These are the tales. This NPT, the Nun's Priest Tale is one of those tales. Yes. And the third component is the talk on the road. Okay. So, it is important to appreciate the value of the other two structural units, that is the tales and the talk on the road as well, especially as we have studied the prologue in such a detailed manner. Remember, this particular tale comes between the monk's tale and the doctor's tale. So, in your course book, all the tales are mentioned. Due to our time constraints, I was not able to, you know, explain all these tales in your course book each and every tale is mentioned so when you have time you may read about it let's focus our attention towards page number 94 of block 1 that is unit 6 it is titled the talk on the road this is the third structural component that links the tale together that links the tales together the host who is personally conducting the tour dominates the talk. The host is tactful, alert and humorous. So have you heard of Boccaccio's Decameron? The Decameron by Boccaccio in the Italian language has been held by Chaucerian scholars to be a close parallel to the Canterbury Tales. It can be considered that Canterbury Tales is modeled on Boccaccio's Decameron. It is an important point. Okay. So in the Decameron, 100 stories are told in 10 days, 10 on each day, one by each member of a group of 10. These are mentioned in the last paragraph of page number 94 of blog 1 of UN6 of your MEG01 course book. Another Italian con collection of stories, that is the novella by Giovanni, is an imitation of the Decameron. 
it contains 155 stories all the tales in this are told by the author himself that is giovanni itself one interesting thing to remember is that both these authors bukesio and giovanni are contemporaries of chaucer that is one thing that you can remember now it is important to have an idea on the narrative art of chaucer yes before that it would be great if you could have an idea regarding the story okay this annan's priest tale it is a narrative of 695 lines okay so it is basically the tale of the cock and the hen namely chanticleer and pertlot okay this chanticleer is a proud rooster he is a rooster who dreams of his approaching doom in the form of a fox whereas pertlot is his wife it is said that she was the chief favorite among his six wives all right that is how it becomes more like a comedy or a mock epic for that matter everything is described in such humorous ways so mpt that is nuns free style collocates a number of stories some of them are dream stories or stories about dreams even this particular lead character that is the rooster dreams of his do by the fox okay all these are important aspects the priest the poet and other characters in the tale are explained on page number 97 you may read about that the ironic structure sympathy detachment is mentioned now comes the fact that the tale has a complex formal design it has a complex formal design the aspects of this design include sermon reflection mock heroic comedy dream themes tale etc so this is important 6.7 on page number 99 you must read about this if at all they ask you about the nuns priest tale it has been there once i've seen in a question paper so you must learn this okay NPT is primarily a fable and a fable is interestingly more heroic for it assumes an identity between animals and humans they are seen or they are compared with each other to some extent yes so that is one thing and the situational explanations are also given make some time to read about this about the comical aspects comedy is the essential aspect of the form of the tale Chaucer manipulates the style to recreate serious comic effects. It also has parody, burlesque, and farce as part of it. The comedy of the plot lines in the mingling of satire, simple sympathy, and in the play of wit are notable. The pri- primary plot is realistic and ironic, and the secondary plot is romantic and symbolic. You don't have to. Yeah. See, I don't have to explain regarding this primary and secondary plot. What is the primary plot? The main plot. Every drama or every piece of mostly in drama and novel, we see that there is a main lead hero heroine perhaps and there is a second hero heroine. Likewise, there is a main plot and a secondary plot. You can read about it here. The main plot characters are the Shadowlands but plot. There are also other characters you can read about it. Now comes the dream the dream stories the debate on dream In Middle English poetry the dream is used as a poetic technique We already had a discussion on this I hope you remember And this in a way suggests vision or imagination So Langland's Pious Plowman and Chaucer's own work such as Parliament of Fowls Troilus and Cressida use this device of dreams, dream allegory. We already mentioned that uh, in the yeah at a later phase of time, the psychoanalytic interpretation by Freud and Jung have also revolutionized this modern thoughts on dreams. Here in this particular tale, Chaucer added the dream of Chanticleer to the traditional story. So, what is this traditional story that they are mentioning? The tale, this particular tale itself, is an adaptation from a French collection of satirical fables. 
Roman D. Renard. Okay, it is the original satirical fable from which it has been adapted. Okay, so that's the basic points in Unit Six. Moving on to Unit Seven. You can see that the use of learning and allusion in NPT, the Nuns Priest Tale 2, is notable. That is, the tale itself is an adaptation from a French collection of satirical fables, as I mentioned. There are analogies and parallels that are used to introduce learned allusions, especially to the Iliad. What do you mean by the Iliad? It's a work by Homer. Who was Homer? A Greek writer. So Chaucer's allusions to the poetic, mythological and philosophical traditions of Europe show that he is the most European of English poets. We can also mention the speech, dialogue, reflection, narration and description that is seen in this particular tale. This is also important, 7.3. You must find some time to read and understand that. That is, NPT is a dramatic tale. The action here is more verbal than non-verbal. What do you mean by verbal? Verbal is spoken or written in nature. Non-verbal means the actions. Okay, It's all said here. It's all verbal in nature. Okay, The speech of the folks addressed to the cock. Okay, That also happens finally. As this uh, cock feared, this folks would appear at some point in time. And there is a speech happening between these two. And it is also highly rhetorical and full of dramatic irony hmm? yes um, there are so many details mentioned i know that you might not be aware of the entire story so you'll have to read and understand so it is not of great help if i keep on explaining all of these nevertheless make sure that you read this section 7.3 one notable thing is to understand that, just give me a minute, yes, we need to understand that there are many levels of meanings in this particular tale. That is on the primary level, the nun's priest tale is a brilliant and complex exposure of vanity, self-esteem and self-intelligence to the through the mock heroic treatment of a beast fable. How he has changed a beast fable into a mock epic is commentable. On the secondary level, the nuns priest joins the discussion of the pilgrims on poverty, women's advice, rhetoric and also on matters regarding marriage. So it's all something that you need to know. That's also 7.4 of your study material. Thereafter, the unit ends with an outline survey of Chaucer criticism. How critics have commented upon Chaucer and his writings. So, dear learners, always make sure that you have an idea regarding the structure of your textbook. That is, if you turn on to page number 112, you can see that there is a list of suggested readings given there. Don't you worry, it's not mandatory to read. I know most of you will never read that. Uh, they would ask you questions from those reading materials. Nevertheless, if you are a true lover of literature, if you are really into studying in English language and literature, not just for Mark's sake, then you may find time to read those additional materials. Nevertheless, each and every one of you should find time to read Appendix 1, that is the entire text of Canterbury Tales. See how Igno has structured the textbook. They have given even the text included within the study material so that you don't have to go outside and find the text. Okay. The appendix 1 provides you the lines of Canterbury Tales. If you move on to 143, there you can see the Nuns Priest Tale in PT is given there. If you do on, uh, yeah, if you move on to 155, you can see the prologue. To Canterbury Tales. There is supplementary reading material on page number 184. Yes, learners are very often confused why they have given you this. See, this is a piece of writing on Chaucer by Aldous Huxley. From the examination point of view, you don't have to be afraid of this. 
But as I mentioned, if you are interested, it would be great if you can read that part as well. Okay. So, now it's time for us to have an evaluative analysis from the examination point of view. Let's have a quick discussion on the important questions from this block. Would you like to hear about the important questions from block 1? Oh, when I said that, everybody is interested. When you listen, important questions, oh, everybody will be interested. Yes, good. So, first and foremost, let me help you with some previous questions, okay? And the things that I could remember right now, that is, there was a question to discuss Chaucer's handling of the fable in NPT. Okay, this was a 20 mark essay question, supposedly asked in the month of June, PEE June 2015, I suppose. Yes, I mean, I've kept a note of this in my textbook, that's why I could say this. June 2015, yes. So, NPT is important, they can ask you questions from that. So in the year 2018, there was a question regarding Chaucer's poetry, his narrative technique and things like that. So you need to make use of the previous units, units 3, 4, for writing this question. And this portrait gallery is also, you can have a reading on that. And I have seen many questions regarding, you know, how Chaucer has created all these portraits from different strata of the society. Okay. I also told you that page number that is important. Yes, 76. That part is very important. Hmm? It would be great if you can study Chaucer's poetry. Yes, right from that it is important. One tip that I would like to suggest is that keep a notebook okay, and make notes of the key points. For example, if you are studying Chaucer, you can certainly write Chaucer's comic vision, Chaucer's language and versification. You can combine the units and answer. Alright, so all these would help you prepare effectively for your examination. Making notes would also help. That might sound trivial to some of you. I know many of you must be studying after a long gap. Some of you must be multitasking. This must be your X or end MA course. Nevertheless, it's up to you how you take it, your attitude towards it. So if you are deeply interested, you can make notes. And one thing that you should take care of it, I've seen many learners who prepare beautiful notes, but they forgot to study that. So, do not keep on preparing notes, find equal time to revise it as well. As I always say, we are not robots to remember everything at one go. Unless you work hard, you won't be able to succeed, whatever the matter is. Hmm? Unless you are very lucky. There are exceptions though, I know. Nevertheless, the general way of understanding is that you need to work hard. Hmm? There shall be success. So, uh, let's hope that the session was useful to you. That's all for today in this particular session we discussed block one of unit one titled what is the title of the unit orientations for the study of poetry and the medieval poet chosa what all did we study in unit one we said that's not it's just the portrait and its interpretations that is given unit two is important for your general understanding yes the prelude to the study of poetry. Unit 3 dealt with the life and works of Chaucer. And unit 4 is very important. It dealt with Chaucer's poetry. Unit 5 dealt with the prologue to the Canterbury Tales. It's also very important. You also need to have an idea regarding the, the social strata, the portrait gallery, his words, etc. Then unit 6 and 7 is about NPT. That's kind of easy. But make sure that you study the main key words and the key points, okay? Many people think like it's English language and literature examination. We can, you know, write stuff. We can add gas <laughs> into it. So that is not the right way to do. Always make sure that you mention the key points, okay? 
key points must be there even if you are fluent in english language at times you might not be able to score well just because you missed the key terms okay i suppose i have made it clear to you so that's all for today thank you